Beats and making it hard. Making it hard. It's Big Bobby G. Big Bobby J. And it's Wednesday mornings, and as usual, now we all are getting accustomed to going live to Trinidad and Tobago with Miss Latoya. Good morning, Toya. How are you? morning, Bobby, and how are you on this wonderful morning? I am doing extremely great. I must say to you, a few weeks ago, you mentioned to us right here on the Sweet Morning Drive that a lot of artists will be doing what we call live Facebook, Instagram, and sexual performances, and we see that your predictions are coming to reality. A number of folks are doing so. <laughs> yes, that is indeed. But then also that I want you guys to also remember that it's not just the frontline artists who are doing stuff. So, like I said, what I'll bring to you throughout the season is that we'll be touching base on different people within the industry. And the person who I have for you this morning, let me tell you about this guy. One, he's very talented. He's very creative. I work with him several times. We have the guy who is responsible for those new videos. Mr. Stephen Taylor, good morning. Good morning, good morning, Bobby, Bob, Latoya, the wider world, good morning. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> nice having me, nice having me, good morning, everybody. Listen, congratulations on the success in the past. Go ahead, Latoya. All right, this is Stephen, and I want you to introduce yourself and tell us who is Stephen Taylor. Well, um, Stephen Taylor, Stephen and Taylor, he's from Trinidad and Tobago. I've always had a passion for putting our culture on the world stage through visual storytelling. So, um, studied at UE, ended up living in Los Angeles for quite a bit, studied at USC, did a master's there in film, and from since the age of seven, have always just done everything that would...
by extension, collaborating with brands. Because now there's a, a new a digital wave of marketing, whereby you don't just have to market a beverage by having an ad with just featuring a beverage or a snack or whatever restaurant or food. Now you can have very subtle types of marketing that show support of an artist work or Instagram live or even if they to just come on and give some sort of endorsement for, you know, uh, to some governmental organization, etc. So for me, I see it as us being, you know, digging into our creative toolkit and trying to provide value for what already exists. Artists and creatives aren't just, you know, cameramen, as you like to say, or, or song boys. Mm-hmm. We are multifaceted uh, people who have different aspects and avenues of our creative life that we can share. And now is a good time to put value on who we are on our personal brand. And, and I've seen that work really well with certain artists who have been able to come up with ideas and partner with major brands. Um, so for now, I think it's amazing. It's an amazing time. During the Renaissance, those guys were created. We, we create and we invent in challenging time. As, as much as you saw um, some of the changes that you spoke about there, Soka Music is mm-hmm. worldwide and, and international. How do you see the business aspect changing, not only just with performers, but guys like yourself behind the scene in terms of profitability and, and from a business perspective? Where do you see the future for people like yourself in the business? Amazing question, Bobby. Um, just recently I saw, and I don't know if you saw it, Latoya, um, DJ Khalid, he did an Instagram live, mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, yeah. a trend, a trend woman, he put her on live, and she ended up singing and on, on the spot, and he, you know, was touting Trinidad, and he raised her and so on. I think right now because the world is so small and we are so connected, also music is in the digital format. You know, you don't have to come to a concert all the time. Music videos are in a digital format. So I think right now the way that it would make money from a business standpoint is for artists to continue to put value to their work by collaborating with international acts, international artists, and not just focusing on music videos, but focusing on endorsements that incorporate the business side of it. So you can do a music video, but one thing I see, especially with soca music videos, is we don't have a lot of collaboration. If we could, if we reflect on a rap music video, for for example, you would see them, you know, having some famous alcoholic brand in there, mm-hmm. or they'll have a particular vehicle or a particular T-shirt line, or a particular, you know, and and that's not just the show. They are putting money and investing in sort of a partnership through that brand awareness. I think now is the perfect time to encourage our soca artists. And, and there are those doing it, of course, the veterans are already doing that. But for even the young ones to see the value in their brand and what they bring to the table by taking advantage of the fact that the world has gone really digital and literally your music can leave Trinidad, your home in Trinidad, and end up in Australia by the click of a mouse. Um, and be able to be paid the same way digitally by getting one of those apps or cash app or, or anything like that. So I think now is a perfect time. It's amazing and it allows us to do more work at a rapid pace. And the good thing about music and music videos is once you do it once, it lives on forever. So you now have to make sure that you tie in your royalties and your publishing deals and your percentage deals. So when you put that effort out once, you're paid repeatedly. So that's the business side there where they want to have to talk to, you know, uh, lawyers in the entertainment field and really put some substance to the plan. Uh, so I see it actually going to that next level. When DJ Khalid says, yo, chill it out, I'm going to go, pull up, pull up. You know, when Justin Bieber is making, you know, Caribbean pop kind of music, mm-hmm. and, and we could go on and on. They are aware of it, but we just need to keep pushing forward so that the, the purity of the art form isn't diluted and people really embrace it as it is. Nice. <laughs> go ahead, Bobby. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Retro. <laughs> You know, um, Stephen, we touch on the financial side of things. So what about, you know, the young ones who is coming up who want to get involved in the creative industry? Because one of the things that we 
also um, looking at is that not all entertainment artists slash are tech savvy. Mm. Where they will be able to say, okay, fine, put out uh, proper content because they don't just want to drop anything spiky spiky and diminish your brand. Right. right. So, what advice would you give to those young upcoming artists, those young upcoming film producers, people in your industry, creative minds who work behind the scenes, who basically want to get more involved to assist like our local local artists, our local brands, our local companies? push things further and survive still within this industry right now during this COVID period? Great question. Um, I value the importance of a team and knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. I was really talking to, you know, a filmmaker from LA just yesterday, one of my colleagues, and he was, he was basically lamenting the fact that he despises having to post stuff on, on social media, etc. He wants to focus on content and the craft. Two things, I have two responses to that. One, when you're now starting off, you have to play all roles. And it's a great exercise so that when you actually get somebody to manage your social media or you actually get an agent or a manager, you would have <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You would you would have experience it first hand what it takes to facilitate each role. So when you finally have the opportunity and the cash flow to hire someone, you know what your brand is, you know how to communicate your vision and what you need to get done. The second part of it is collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Yes, you see, you know, a double M on screen and yes, you see a Tyree or any other famous actor, but they have an entire team behind them. I always tell creators, right now we are you know, depending on what which circle you are on, people are on the same level. Just ask, yo, I have this new song. I'm not really good at social media. I see, I, I really like what you post on Instagram. Can we work together? And what I'll do is I'll tag your handle on my photos. And anytime I have an interview, I'll mention your name. So you get mileage. And that way you can get clientele through me now advertising your product. So we now work hand and create sort of a barter system. What tends to work out afterwards is because you develop that loyalty to each other, when you get the paying gig, it's very easy for you to call up that same friend who's committed his time, his talent, his time, his skill to now say, yo, we have some cash, let's make this happen. So I feel like now is the perfect time if you're now starting off. Reach out to those friends who work you admire. Reach out to those friends who you really connect with and are on the same wavelength. And also embrace the opportunity to learn the different parts of the industry that you will eventually have to now outsource to other individuals. But at the end of the day, what people fail to remember is um, when you hire a a lawyer, an agent, or manager, they are working for you which means you still have to give them instructions and still have to be very clear on your vision. They they are there, you hire them to work with you. So now is a perfect time, I would say, to collaborate, find people who you drive with, who you connect with, build your team, and be very clear with what you are exchanging with each other at this time. Be very clear. This This is a barter system. I need to do this, this, this for you. I am expecting you to do this, this, and this. If I get paid, I am going to pay you 10%, 50%, or we're going to invest in a project together. Those conversations are healthy and should be written down as well. Because you know, Latoya, when money, money, when money comes into take, this is everything I can, I, I can't remember when we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> you get the number you have dialed is not in <laughs> What it used to be, you get rich on your switch. <laughs> you get rich on your switch. So this oh, is okay. People say, you know, when you write it down, all of a sudden, oh, you get so serious, fever. Oh, all of a sudden, it's professional. No, no, no. It's just to prevent amnesia. That's all. I just want to be able to type in the subject line agreement with XYZ and have Google remind both of us. Well, what the arrangement? So, so that, those are two things I'd say. 
Yeah, you have shared some valuable information. I have one final question for you. How are, no, sure. how, how, how cooperative it, you find the artist when someone wants to do a video? Is it a hundred percent of your idea, or is it a collaboration? How does the process actually work? Great, great question. Thanks, guys. I really enjoying the time sharing with you and and, you, and your listeners. Um, it, it it goes a number of ways. Some artists they will call me and say, Stephen, I have a man too mad, right? Yeah. <laughs> but 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 I want real deal, real real deal, right? Yeah. They'll say. And then I'll say, okay, cool. Let me dig into this a little more. Yeah. I will present a concept that may have more layers, and will take them in an avenue that takes into consideration what they want and put it in a more elaborate way, right? Most artists want to be seen in a, in a specific light. So in that instance, they'll call me, they'll give me a song, they'll express how they feel about it. If it's sexy, they want to have some kind of energy or they want to look in a certain way, I'll, I'll take that song, I'll play it a million and one time, and then meet with them and pitch ideas, to which point one of them would stick and will develop. Another another way is an artist may have a vision, right? Because for the most part, they are like the screenwriter in this, this visual movie. And they'll say, Stephen, I wrote this song, and when I was writing it, I thought about this larger bless. And she would tackle these fellas in Tagarico, and, and there was this fellow from Boston that, and I want to I wanna have a kind of international feel. So they will come with different points uh, and different images that they have in mind, and bring it to me and I will flesh it out. Now, when I flesh something out, I have to take into consideration the artist's budget and their time constraint. I did one music video once, we shot it and came up with the idea in 48 hours. So that idea had to be, you know, something we could turn over really quickly and edit and release. There's some some um, concepts where we have to build a full set like open houses so for global music video, we built a coffin and we had to have um, an art director design it and we had to build a whole stage. And then, yeah, was, wardrobe. And then there's wardrobe and, and so on and makeup. Um, and then we have to figure out what their budget is and what we have to outsource, how many people may have to volunteer and how many days we need to shoot. So most times I tend to try to keep the idea down to one day because it, it helps with the artist budget. Um, so that they'll actually be able to market the music video. And that's a big, big, big uh, point that most, I think, generally artists miss out on. When you do a music video, it's just a tactic and a strategy. The music video doesn't have legs. It, it, it needs to be carried. So I try to remind them that, hey, we, this is your production budget, but don't forget, we now have to create that strategy, that vehicle to present this music video to your audiences so that they can receive it. Um, either one, I enjoy the process because I love collaboration. I love ideas. I love, like, just developing layers to it. And, um, yeah, but when I get to create some stuff, it's also good, too, because it's like, okay, I can do whatever I want. Nice, well, let's go. It's funny, but Based on the budget, 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 budget. <laughs> you have anything else right now? Um, no, I'm actually just right now, you know, just over relaxed for a very moment. I am actually, Stephen and I have something in common coming up on March, May 10th. We yeah. work together on the project, um, the movie, um, sorry, the TV series, The Amazing Race. The yeah. It's okay. a big old. It's a, yeah, I'm sure that's it. Yeah, so wow, that's we awesome. actually, you know, just sit in. Yeah, for the next patient, we wait in for the premiere of that. Uh-huh. A two hours premiere, they will be going on May 10th. So, yeah, I think the team will be having a good season. Awesome. Well, Stephen, I'll go meet and uh, have some popcorn and chill. Okay, yeah, but that's what we made up. We yeah. made up on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, Stephen, I want to thank I want to thank you, Stephen, for taking the time. It's very informative. I have a different perspective, a new appreciation for all what goes into making these videos that we also like to watch and take. Continue success, and let's stay in touch. Thank you so much, and for all your listeners, anybody who wants to get in contact with me, any young ones, any film enthusiasts, you just want to ask a question, you can always reach out to me on Instagram at Stephen Taylor Film, that's S-T-E-V-E-N, 
Pila film, and I'll be happy to share even more. All right, so thanks for talking as well. Nice meeting you, Digital E, Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for joining us.